Kept in the dark, Minister Mahinda Samarasinghe says the president is opposed to liberalising shipping through the 2018 budget proposal. Crucial discussions. The SLFP and the joint opposition hold two more meetings on the prospect of contesting together. Let it refloat. Chairman of Avangard demands that he be allowed to reactivate his business. Says he can bring in funds to save Mattala and Hambantota. Irony of Gotabe's arrest talks. Yesterday was LTT's Heroes Day. The day before yesterday was Prabhakaran's birthday. In the same period we are also discussing Gotabe Rajapaksha is going to be arrested. State Minister of Defence Ruan Vijayvardhana meanwhile pledges legal action of exhibiting Prabhakaran's photos. Government must allocate funds to improve infrastructure, facilitating research. We don't have much improved private sector who contribute sufficiently towards research and development. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Dhamma Gekanayaka. Now, various top stories from across the country are on the way. But we start this evening with our president's visit to South Korea. Now, President Maitra Sihanouk received an unexpected warm welcome from Korean President Moon Jae-in today, a day ahead of the scheduled official meeting. The visit took place in conjunction with the 40th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between Sri Lanka and the Republic of Korea. President Maitripala Sirisena received a warm welcome when he arrived at the Incheon International Airport in Seoul this morning for a three-day state visit to Republic of Korea on an invitation extended by the Korean President Moon Jae-in. He was received by a group of high-ranking officials from the Korean government, which included the Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs Chu Hyun and Chief of National Security Chung Yi yong as his first official task during his visit, the president visited the historical Jogyesha Temple in Seoul, where he was greeted by the president of Korea, Moon Jae-in. According to the president's media division, President Moon said that he decided to come unannounced as he wanted to show his respect for President Sirisena, citing that President Sirisena and him share many things in common. Most Venerable Seoul Jong blessed the two presidents and expressed hope that the two humble leaders of their peoples would be able to carry forward the two countries and the people towards progress. Minister of Ports and Shipping Mahinda Samrasinghe states that President Maitripala Sirisena opposes the proposal via Budget 2018 to liberalise shipping and freight forwarding sectors. The subject minister went on to reveal that his ministry was unaware of such a proposal until it was presented in parliament. Minister Samra Singh was speaking in parliament today during the budget debate related to ports and shipping. There are three proposals for our ministry in the 2018 budget. A Gazette notification was issued in 1992 stating that shipping agents can keep 60% of the shares while foreign shipping companies can have 40% of the shares. All of these shipping agents are local businessmen. We were completely unaware of the proposal to liberalize the sector until they read it in parliament. So we had to oppose it. The SLFP met with the president to raise opposition towards the proposal. This won't bring in much investment to the country. If they want to implement the proposal, there should be a condition that foreign companies must at least bring in 100 million US dollars. The president is also of the same stance. They signed an agreement with China Merchants Port to reduce loan interest installments, meaning we don't have to pay any more. But I am saying that you paid another loan installment in August, even after signing the agreement. We'd like to know as to why you paid it. I mean, we can't give them the port and also pay off loan installments. We can't do both. Although the agreement was signed, the handing over of the port will be done on another agreed date. We expect it to be on the first week of December. Until then, we'd have to pay loan installments worth 22 million US dollars. It is up to you to make the decision as to whether the Colombo port should be closed or not. You have that capability because you sold the Hamantara port. Now Minister Arjun Ranatunga didn't do it and we respect him for it. He was transferred to another ministerial position because he opposed this decision. It will be harmful for the country if you do the same for the Colombo port as well. There are about two cabinet ministers in this government 
whose first thought of the day is selling something of the country. They still buy the selling things or by keeping them. That's what they did with the airport. The previous government stole through aircraft purchases and this government is stealing by returning these aircraft. That's the main topic the COPE is discussing. No one knew about the Hambantara port agreement, but we have given proposals to amend clauses in the agreement. We asked the Chinese company to protect employment of local employees. I kindly request the minister to take up their responsibility. Chairman of the Avangard Security Services, retired Major Nisanka Senadipati, challenges the government to probe issues surrounding his business, claiming that the resumption of his operations would aid the country in overcoming debt. Senadipati made the remark whilst joining the program 360 of TV Derna last evening. Ukasela, finance a Gagan ever one angle, Lame is calling us Kala Sanka. May Ratata, Rasaval, Haida Spansiak, Raniviruang in Atikarala, Rate Videshinime, Billiona, Mama Data Gena, I can Natikarala, other Navika Mudava Kiwa, Billiona Deca, Dasamutuna, Hamburger Glaud, Mamma Ambagara, Pai the Samapa. Kia Padura, Sanka, Kia Padu. Oh, then, 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 over the Gindigatama, then Lipilak and Idripat Karanava, Neva, Nitian Kula Bave, Pilibado, Magging Vimasanava, then Oberto, Katiut, Randibotica, Aragon and the Ba, the Karnate, Adi Karnate, Gilavar, Nyoga Kila, it in the Tiba, make an Avatan Dadano, make it a Mokakara, Trutahanam Nyoga Karadin, make an Avatan, Neoman Musai will kill Naduda, the Yepera, then Billion Decatas and Park Maladin, E Mutama Trust Fund, Degar Davala, a interest again, may Rekia Nati, Ranaviruanta, Givita Kala Pura, Padi Gavana, Mama. Janadi Petumata, Melave, Abiogakaran, Janadi Petitumani, Merate, May Viapare, Matapulang, I make activate current, May Viapare. Heta Ude, Commission Nagadala, Rate Nagavisitumat Gala, Nitipati Radgala, Hundama, Judge Paralegadala, Mao Ganala, May Lun Tino, Dada Hagar, May Lun Okoma, Niri Senegala, Heta Matavasar de Nama Challenge Kerno, May Dollar Billion a Deca, Economy Man Deca Geno, Aurudu, Deki, Abe Tavak Yusumak, Tamba Sata Park Mate, Anna Rape. Raja Mudanatu, I am making up Hingakala, Anter Hamban to Varaya, Matalekun, Anne de Gabergan, Mame Saligena Ratat, Mangabio Gakarn. Now, will the SLFP resolve their differences with the joint opposition? Well, two back to back meetings were held today between Sri Lanka Freedom Party and the joint opposition to discuss if they will contest local government elections together. The discussions were held at the parliamentary complex. Committees of the SLFP and Joint Opposition appointed to decide if the two groups will contest the upcoming local government elections together held two meetings today. Attention was drawn to the conditions and policy matters put forward by the two sides. A final decision, however, was not reached and yet another discussion needs to be held in the coming days. Meanwhile, prior to the meetings, MPs of the Joint Opposition held discussions with former President Mahindra Rajapaksha at the parliamentary complex. Following the meetings, the MPs expressed their views to media. Our decision is that until they leave the UNP or defeat the budget, there will be no discussions between us and them. Our MPs convened a meeting and following lengthy discussions, dispersed with the intention of facing the election. It is a failure. We told them that we can discuss further if the SLFP, together with President Maitri Pala Sirisena, leaves the UNP. For now, there is no definite message. What we say is that if they want to further discuss and work with us, they should leave all their ministerial posts and come to the opposition. We can contest together as the opposition. We can't contest elections with one foot in the government and the other in the opposition. The entire joint opposition holds this stance. Meanwhile, the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramona made deposits for the upcoming election for Colombo, Anuradhapura and Putlam districts today. Various views were expressed on the discussions between the SLFP and the joint opposition. We cannot get together with a party that is in alliance with the UNP. They want us to leave the government to join them. If our MPs leave tomorrow and join the opposition, seven or eight amongst us will join the UNP to form a single government. In any case, our period of agreement has expired. We're staying with the UNP until December as per a request from the president. 
Thus, it is a decision to be made by the party. There are a few more days left for it. <laughs> we urge former President Mahinda Rajapaksha not to join them. If that happens, the Mahasangha and the public will leave your side. <laughs> State Minister of Defence Ruan Vijayvardhan insists that exhibiting photographs of the former MTT leader Velupilya Prabhakaran is an offence and those who are culpable of it will be brought to book. The State Minister made the comment in response to a question raised by media following an event in Gampa. <laughs> We were also informed of such incidents. The Terrorism Investigation Division has launched investigations since such actions are illegal. LTT is a banned terrorist group. The Terrorism Investigation Division will carry out necessary investigations and arrest those who are involved. This is something which is uttered every year. I saw such posts on Facebook for several years. Pictures taken in South India are edited and posted on Facebook saying it is in the north of Sri Lanka. Parliamentarians of the joint opposition make statements based on such posts. The Court of Appeal will decide tomorrow whether to permit the police to bring charges against former Defence Secretary Gautabi Rajpaksha under the Public Property Act. The Court of Appeal gave the decision today when it deliberated a writ petition filed by Gautabi Rajpaksha. The former Defence Secretary stands accused of misappropriating funds when constructing the DA Rajpaksha Memorial Museum. Petition filed by former Defence Secretary Gautabi Rajapaksha was considered by President of the Court of Appeal LTB Dehidenia and Justice Shiran Gunaratna today. President's Counsel Ramesh De Silva, who appears for the former Defence Secretary, stated that the Financial Crime Investigation Division is planning on arresting his client, alleging that he misused public funds during the construction of DA Rajapaksha Memorial Museum. President's Counsel went on to say that the FCID had already presented a certificate to the magistrate magistrate's court under the act of public property. De Silva stated that this is a case under the Civil Procedure Court and claimed that the FCID presented the certificate under the act of public property with the intention of remanding his client. De Silva went on to request the appeal court to cancel the particular certificate through a writ order and an interim order suspending it to be implemented. The judges ruled to issue an order on the matter tomorrow. Meanwhile, views were expressed in the political arena on the rumoured attempts to arrest the former Defence Secretary. I have the letter with me. The Attorney General's Department has informed the FCID to arrest and record statements from five persons, including former Defence Secretary Gautabi Rajpaksha, on charges of misusing funds of the Sri Lanka Land Reclamation and Development Corporation to construct tombs for his parents. Not only that, they also informed the FCID to present certificates that will confirm that these were public properties. No public properties are involved here. We will take action against those police officers who make up these kinds of fake reports. It's ironic. Yesterday was LTT's Heroes Day. The day before yesterday was Prabhakaran's birthday. In the same period, we are also discussing Gotabe Rajapaksha is going to be arrested. It's a common secret that he's been seen as a potential candidate for presidential election. He has never said it, but it is being talked about. Now, it's a political move to discredit an opponent for political victimization. They are trying to ensure a potential opponent is eliminated, paving a way for their own electoral interests to be secured. Now, several protests were worked off across the country today. One of the demonstrations was staged opposite the educational office in Mahoya, organized by the Organization to Protect Educational Rights. Representing the educational zone of Mahoya in the Ampara district, the demonstrators attempted to forcefully enter the Mahoya educational office. The protesters charged that there is a shortage of 211 teachers in 40 schools in the Ampara district and that principals of seven schools who requested teachers were handed transfers. Although they carried an epistle illustrating the issue, they ultimately set fire to it as there wasn't a responsible official at the Zonal Education Office to hand it over. In the meantime, a protest was held in front of the Presidential Secretariat by a group of disabled war veterans today. The protesters requested a solution to slashed pensions. 
The police used roadblocks to stop them from entering the presidential secretariat. They ultimately dispersed after handing over a letter to the additional secretary at the Ministry of Defence. Another protest was worked off near the parliament roundabout today by locals in Kolonava and Kaduvela who were affected by the recent floods. They charged that compensation was not forthcoming for their damaged property. JVP parliamentarian Sunil Handunetti then discussed the matter with the protesters. Saying the government doesn't have money is not the answer to this because funds were allocated for these people. What we have to ask is what happened to the allocated money. Sanad De Silva, the chief executive officer of the National Insurance Trust Fund, arrived at the scene and promised an immediate solution, upon which the protesters dispersed. We have given the opportunity to those who are affected to make an appeal. We are committed to do justice by those who had to face injustice. In the meantime, employees of the Sri Lanka Transport Board's main depot in Vaunia staged a strike today, demanding the transfer of the Northern Regional Manager of SLTB. All SLTV buses in the Vaunia terminal were withdrawn from the depot, seizing transportation while causing severe inconvenience to rural citizens and school children. Now let's look at other stories making news across Sri Lanka. The Supreme Court today dismissed a fundamental rights petition filed by Shanil Nettikumara seeking a court order preventing his arrest by allegedly threatening a witness in the Treasury bond investigation. Nettikumara filed the motion last week notifying an attempt to arrest him for allegedly threatening Anika Vijay Surya, who testified against former Finance Minister Ravi Karuna Naika at the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing the controversial central bank bond issuance. The Presidential Commission of Inquiry to investigate and inquire into serious acts of fraud, corruption and abuse of power, state resources and privileges is to hand over its final report to President Maitri Pala Sirisena after finalising all investigations. The Commission completed investigations into 17 complaints during its extended mandate until the end of November. Customs officers apprehended a Sri Lankan at the Bandaranaike International Airport while attempting to smuggle currency notes valued over 2.3 million rupees out of the country. The Dubai-bound man was identified as a 46-year-old residing in Colombo. A construction worker in the Keravalapitiya Khadavata Expressway project died whilst on duty yesterday. He was killed in electrocution when he was engaged in welding work atop an electric post in Pahala Karagamuna Khadavata. Other employees involved in the construction project refused to engage in duty following the incident, citing lack of safety in their workplace. Welcome back. Now, Minister of Science, Technology and Research, Susil Premajanta says it is the duty of the government to allocate funds for research and development while encouraging private sector involvement. He also said that Sri Lankan scientists should direct research towards value addition for local exports, thereby finding avenues for exchanged or enhanced foreign exchange inflows. He made the remark addressing a workshop held in Colombo today. A workshop on research management organized by the National Science Foundation and the Global Research Council was worked off today under the patronage of Minister of Science, Technology and Research, Susil Premijayanta. The workshop was attended by local and international scientists and researchers. Addressing the gathering, Minister Susil Premijayanta explained that his ministry is in the process of achieving targets set for the next three years under the vision Innovating Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka, we don't have much improved private sector who contribute sufficiently towards research and development. Therefore, it is the duty of the government to allocate funds to improve infrastructure facilities and allocate funds for research. But with the challenges we are facing today, prevents the channeling more funds for research and development. The minister also emphasized on the importance of paying attention to the field of indigenous medicine, adding that Sri Lankan scientists are in the process of extracting a vaccine for cancer from mangroves. He called on scientists to seek ways to give support to the national economy through research. You find in Sri Lanka, well, best graphite with 96% carbon content, we produce and we export as it is without adding value. Ilmenite, we export as it is in tons without adding value. We produce, uh, uh, well, best 
gemstones. But we have to add value and improve our foreign exchange remittances. Governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, Dr. Indrajit Kumaraswamy, says Sri Lanka exports have improved at large due to Indian and Chinese demand. He was delivering the opening remarks at the Sri Lanka Economic and Investment Conclave held in Colombo today. And there are different channels through which Sri Lanka is affected. The first is trade. The Sri Lanka's major export markets, as I said, the US and Europe have experienced recovery. In addition, India, which is the third largest export market, is expected to turn around and have accelerated growth. So the prospects for Sri Lanka in terms of its key markets are positive. And we are beginning to see that in our export number. If you look at the Sri Lanka's export performance in the last four or five years, there has been a pickup. Last four or five months, rather, there has been a pickup. And, um, of course, the restoration of GSP Plus and the removal of the EU's fishing ban has helped us, and we're beginning to see the benefits of that coming through as well. And as far as India is concerned and, and the accelerated rate of growth, though we've had proximity in the past, the fact that infrastructure in both countries was particularly weak meant that there was distance created because of the very high transaction costs that are associated with poor infrastructure. However, infrastructure is now improving in both countries, and that is going to mean that there will be a better set of conditions to be able to take advantage of the proximity to that very large market as far as Sri Lanka is concerned, particularly the five southern states of India, which have experienced double-digit growth now for a number of years. Let's now take a look at some corporate news in brief. The unveiling of Love Sindhana Fuel Theme Park was held in Colombo recently. The fuel theme park aims to create shopper destinations around Love's fuel stations across the country, bringing convenience and a one-stop shop for motorists. The fuel theme park follows a drive-through format where motorists are able to make purchases from their vehicles. The launch of Nature Agro Ceylon Sugar Killer Tea, the first of its kind, was held in Colombo recently. The product developed by Nature's Agro Products Lanka Company aims to reduce arthritis, diabetes and cholesterol and acts as a health tea. Virtuous Awards Night 2017 was held in Colombo last week. The annual awards ceremony recognized staff members who were outstanding performers for year 2017. And now to give you a market update, Sri Lankan shares touched a more than two-month closing low today, dragged down by financials even as investors waited for clarity on new taxes and key legislation. The Colombo Stock Index ended 0.19% lower at 6,405.22, its lowest close since the 15th of September. The index fell 1.1% last week but is up 3% in the year so far. Let's cross over to Amanda Lokugamage from First Capital Holdings for a detailed report. All share price index was on a short-lived uptrend in the early hours of the day, followed by a volatile downward movement to move between seven points prior to close at the day's low of 6,405 levels, losing 12 points. Price decline in 83 counters led by big cap Ceylon coal stores weighted heavily on the index, negating the effect of positive contributors led by Singa Sri Lanka. Both turnover and volume dipped amidst low investor confidence, while a moderate 25% foreign participation led to a marginal net foreign inflow of 36 million rupees, dominantly via inflows into HNB and Tokyo voting shares. Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine on Other Derna 24-7. Now let's take a look at some stories from across the world. Election officials in Cuba yesterday hailed municipal elections to find a successor for President Raul Castro, a success with more than 7 million citizens turning out to vote on Sunday. 
Raul Castro announced that he will step down as president of Cuba in February 2018 and set off a chain of elections that will name the country's next leader, who is expected to be the first person outside the Castro family to lead the country in almost 60 years. After Sunday's municipal elections, Cubans will vote for members of the National Assembly, the 614-seat legislative body that will subsequently elect both the president and vice president of Cuba. It is widely expected that first vice president Miguel Diaz Canel will become the president, but the transition is expected to be gradual as Raul will remain head of the Communist Party. Let's take a look at some other stories making news across the world. Rescuers are searching for 12 missing sailors from a Chinese cargo ship that sank yesterday after colliding with another vessel in the mouth of the Pearl River. Altogether, 13 sailors were so far rescued from the two cargo ships, including two from the sunken one. The other cargo ship ran aground. Indonesian officials shut the international airport in Bali for a second day as Mount Agung continues to spew volcanic ash into the atmosphere. Officials raised the alert to the highest level yesterday, fearing an imminent major eruption. Russia denies that its warplanes carried out airstrikes on a village in eastern Syria on Sunday, which activists say killed dozens of civilians. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said Russian aircraft, which are supporting Syrian pro-government forces battling so-called Islamic State in the area, were behind the attack. On to sports now, interim coach of the Sri Lankan cricket team, Nick Pott has warned of repercussions following Sri Lanka's worst ever test defeat at the hands of India yesterday. He was cited by international media yesterday, asserting, quote, players should be embarrassed in their own performances, unquote. Speaking to international media following the second test in Nagpur, Sri Lanka coach Nick Pota warned that unless the players produce results, there will be repercussions. He highlighted the Indian squad's depth in bowling and batting, adding, quote, practicing in the nets means nothing if you do not go out and put runs on the board, unquote. Now moving on from cricket to rugby, for the first time ever, a women's team has been crowned the team of the year at the World Rugby Awards, with All Blacks female counterparts, the Black Ferns of New Zealand, clinching the coveted trophy. The men's and women's awards for the player of the year were also claimed by New Zealand's Bowden Barrett and Portia Woodman, respectively. The World Rugby Awards were worked off recently in Monaco, a ceremony dominated by New Zealand. New Zealand fly half Borden Barrett joined an elite trio of all black greats when he was named Men's Player of the Year for a second successive year. Yeah, very proud and surprised. Um, I wanted to be better than, than last year and I still feel I've got plenty more to, to go so uh, I think that's exciting. The title of Women's Rugby Player of the Year also went to New Zealand as Black Ferns winger Portia Woodman clinched the award. The award for the team of the year was won by a women's team for the first time ever with the Black Ferns capping off a World Cup winning year with yet another trophy. I think just people talking about women's rugby, women's sport overall, um, you know, just having it in the media and everyone just, like I said, just talking about it has probably been the best, best thing for it. Now here is Sadi Nupeka, the other Devna Weather Centre with your forecast first evening edition. and welcome to the Weather Centre. This is your forecast first for the next 24 hours. Now tomorrow's temperatures will average at around 26 degrees Celsius in coastal areas, hitting a high of 28 degrees in the east. Cooler temperatures in the low 20s will prevail in the central hills. Widespread showers can also be expected across the country during the course of the day. That's it from the Weather Centre tonight. Up next is your City by City forecast. And that's a wrap for tonight, but you can of course connect with us on Facebook by visiting facebook.com slash first at nine or on Twitter at twitter.com slash first at nine for these stories and more. And before we go, we'd like to take you to the Sitawaka Wet Zone Botanical Garden in Avisavil, one of the newest botanical gardens in the country. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.
bringing you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Varana, 24-7.